Hello and welcome back to this episode of Emotion Ocean Talks with Gabriele Kerber. Today's topic is a fish which many of you might have seen when you went snorkeling or diving either in the Pacific, in the Indian Ocean or in the Red Sea. I know I have seen it quite a lot. Um, it's a beautiful fish. And here he is, Epibolus insidiator, the deceiver. Well, he doesn't look very deceitful here. This is a grown-up male. They will be up to 50 centimeters long, while the females are smaller and either brown with a yellow patch or the whole body bright yellow. They're typical reef fish. They move along the protection close to the protecting reef looking for food. And as you can see here, it's not a rare, really fast mover. So it's not one of those predators that strike with the high velocity of the body. So what is so special about this fish? I said the name is the deceiver. The English name is slingjaw grass. Why slingjaw grass? Let's have a look. So this would be about the maximum size that the fish can reach. It's a male one that I have here in the hand. As I said before, the female would be all yellow. So I didn't get the name of this fish. I didn't understand it until I actually saw it doing this in order to catch prey. It can protrude its jaws by 65 yes, 65% of the complete head length, which is the absolute maximum that was ever reported from any fish. So instead of moving with the whole body through the prey in order to catch it, this guy stops somewhere before it and then just protrudes the mouth, the jaw, sucks in the prey and then retracts the jaw before paddling back and swimming away. And this is how it really looks like in a time-lapse video which I got from Peter Wainwright at the University of California, Davis. So the fish protrudes its jaw, sucks in the prey and retracts the jaw. But how does he do it? Let's look for that at the anatomic structure of the head of this fish. At the left side is the retracted position of all the bones and ligaments, on the right the protruded. The upper jaw, the lower jaw, then the neurocranium which protects the brain. In red the maxilla which connects the upper with the lower jaw and is a guidance structure. The blue one is the quadratum, which is much changed in comparison to other lip fish where it is a small triangular bone and not a long cylinder like here. Then the rotating part opercle in yellow and interopercle in green. And two ligaments connected to the interopercle in orange, a newly formed a ligament connecting the neurocranium with the interopercle, which does not exist in other, any other lip fish, and then the connection between interopercle and end of lower jaw, which is elongated in comparison to other lip fish. So let's translate that anatomical picture onto a model, a simplified model of those structures. Upper jaw, lower jaw, neurocranium, the two more or less vertical bones, the opercle and the interopercle, which are rotating parts, and the two tend uh, ligaments. By pulling up, due to muscular force, the neurocranium and at the same time rotating the opercle, the bones will be moved in a more upright position and with this movement we push the lower jaw to the front. So we have the movement from the backward direction through the vertical direction to a forward direction of the two vertical bones. So this is our 
movement that we have and you can imagine when we have underneath here the jaw which is tightly connected we push it to the front and this is all the movement we have let's have a look at that in a more dynamic model so same system again upper jaw lower jaw neurocranium the two more or less vertical bones the two rotating parts opercle and interopercle and to the interopercle connected the two ligaments to the neurocranium and to the end of the lower jaw in this position which is the retracted position the mouth is fairly closed the tips of the upper and lower jaw a jaw are close together so when now the strike starts two things happen the neurocranium will be elevated moves upward something that I can't do in this model unfortunately the other thing that happens also due to muscular function is the rotation of the opercle so when we rotate the opercle here we see that the interopercle changes its position the tension on the ligament to the neurocranium tightens and now if we imagine in addition the upward movement of the neurocranium it all together leads to a more vertical a more upright position of the bones that is the output of the force that we put in here and by moving the bones forward the upper jaw or the lower jaw will be moved to the front and it takes the upper jaw with it now in this protruded position the ends of the two jaws are closer together which automatically means that the other ends the tips are further apart so here the gape gets bigger this is now the fully protruded situation and in order to revert it to retract the jaw back what happens is that another set of muscles pulls it back we revert the two movements that we had here and due to this combination the jaws slide back into the original position this capability of the sling jaw rest to protrude the mouth that far with that it's unique within its family of the lip fish but also in the higher order of the perch like fish although most of all of them feed with the suction feeding system all of them or most of them are capable of some protrusion of the jaws just a little bit but that much it's only the sling jaw rest and in order to be able to do that we have seen there had to be anatomical changes in the skull in the bone structure in the tendon structure not so much in the muscles and the way how the muscles are activated the sequence is actually the same as for the suction feeding of the other lip fish so evolution did create something unique here and it is actually quite puzzling that there is no other fish which could or which is an intermediate between the other lip fish anatomy and the sling jaw grass um, there are basically no fossils and there is no sister species or anything like that which is like halfway between the two systems therefore we can only have theories on how such a mechanism could evolve but I will not go into those um, theories because that would be going way too far if you want to know more about it email me and then I might just make a video or write an article on that okay so my friend is linked to rest and I say goodbye and I hope I will see you again for another episode of the ocean talks